morning. All right, so today I'm gonna work on our cluster and uh, look at uh, changing the bulbs inside of it. Um, believe it or not, there is a uh, bulb in there that actually is a, the battery light on the cluster, which if it doesn't have a working bulb, it won't actually excite the alternator uh, to turn on, so you'll have to rev it up to about 2,000 RPMs to get it to start. Pretty crazy, huh? So, that's our project for today. So, here we are, uh, going into the car. And uh, so far, taking the bottom piece out uh, for the cluster. So, the first piece you're gonna take out is this bottom piece on the cluster. Uh, some people like to take out the steering wheel, but um, I'm actually okay with being able to just uh, leave it on there. And uh, so basically, there are two of these, and um, unfortunately, I only have one um, of these screws that go on the back of this panel. It's just a plastic panel, and uh, you'll, ha you'll have to take yours. <laughs> As you can see, I only have a leather piece covering the steering column. So it's really easy for me to reach back. Um, I'll have to find that at a junkyard one of these days. But this piece is a um, screw that is really easy to do with your hand if it's not very tight. And so I just reached behind here, unscrewed it, and uh, since I only have one, there should be two, one on each side, uh, I was able to take this off fairly easily. And so that's the first step. Second step is you'll need a Fill up screwdriver and you'll have to take out, I believe, six screws. Um, one, two, three, and four. And then there's two up here at the very top to hold in um, the housing here for the actual cluster. And it's just another plastic piece that kind of wraps around and keeps the cluster in. After that, you'll be able to pull out the cluster and uh, I'll show you what to uh, unplug and what wires to uh, carefully take out. All right. All right, so took out the four screws in the bottom and uh, the housing case kind of came out on its own. There you go. Um, six screws there. And then you'll have to take out one screw on the right side here and another screw on the top left side. And I should be able to take out uh, the entire cluster. All right, let's keep going. All right, so once you have the actual uh, cluster out, you'll have to pull these tabs down so that you don't break them and pull out carefully the cluster. And you'll have a few pieces here in the back that you're gonna have to unplug. You see the blue clip and also the white clip. And I'll show you on one side how to take these out. Basically, you just take a, a flat, flathead screwdriver and just pull out that black tab just so and carefully wiggle these connections out and you'll do the same thing here on, on the blue side uh, in the back you'll have a few other connections a couple light bulbs and also one main wire that goes to the back housing of the odometer for you to unplug be careful with the wires try not to pull them out so that they break and uh, just take your time. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention, whoa, hello. I forgot to mention that there's also one other connection all the way in the bottom of the cluster. It's uh, yellow, you'll see it right there. You'll have to take that out as well. All right, once your cluster's out, make sure the wires um, kind of stay nice and clean. You don't want anything tangling up. I'm trying to remember where the, these bulbs go to. Try to keep on the perspective side of where they plugged in. And then uh, here's your cluster. All right, next I'm gonna show you guys how to open this thing up. I'm gonna change the bulbs on here. I believe they're the uh, 2721. Um, the brand is um, OSPAM, O-S-P-A-M. So they're the black One's on here. I believe they're rated at uh, 12 volts, 1.2 uh, watts. Um, there you go. 
can see them. And um, quite a few, there's uh, a couple of them that are not working and also I have a couple that are not here at all. So we're gonna plug those in. All right, I'll show you that here in a second. So these are our new OSRAM um, 12 volt bulbs. And um, there's the uh, part number. You can order them. They're not very expensive. Uh, about I think I paid about ten dollars for ten bulbs. And uh, we're gonna replace all of them. So we've got quite a few here. I pulled one here already. And then um, just make sure that you replace all of them. Um, also, it's really easy to do. Um, all you have to do is take one and turn it to the left and they have a locking mechanism on them. Uh, if you can't do it by hand, you can always take a pair of pliers and carefully turn them. Nope. And you see that they are really easy to take off, but also really easy to break. So just take your time and make sure that you're doing them correctly. All right, so now I've replaced all the bulbs. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is, uh, again, with a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, you're going to take the outer uh, screws off and um, you'll see them they have kind of a hexagonal shape to them and um, don't take anything else but those and there's going to be one hidden one here um, right underneath uh, the center portion. Alright so once you have taken it out um, just make sure that you are very careful in terms of handling the actual it's basically a circuit board, so um, you know, handle it with care. Um, we are going to do a couple of things while this is apart. I just wanted to make sure that the connections on the bulbs, you'll see the silver tabs here, and make sure that those are clean, and I've cleaned this before. You can use a, uh, a light grit sandpaper to clean it. Just be very careful not to scratch this white part right here. Um, also, you can also just clean it with a piece of cloth too if it's not too corroded. Um, and on the back, uh, you just kind of see, you've already seen this part, just make sure that the black tabs for the bulbs are not loose. Um, for your uh, temperature gauge and your fuel gauge, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, um, we're gonna be uh, cleaning the contacts on these. So there's grounds here that are connected to these uh, uh, posts right here and there's also one on this side and you can see it right there and uh, sometimes the ground on those can go dirty and also um, be bad so basically all you're gonna do is just take a, either a socket or a pair of pliers turn those and uh, very lightly take it out and uh, I'll show you um, basically how to do that and uh, I don't have sockets that are that small. So basically you're just gonna turn this and loosen it just like so. And uh, it'll turn loose and you can pull it out. Um, let me just do this with two hands. So it. we've gotten it out. There it is. Just make sure you put that aside where you're not gonna lose it. And um, be careful too. Uh, there's gonna be another washer right there at the bottom. So. Basically, what you're gonna try to do is make sure that you flip it over and it should come out. If it doesn't come out, you can come from this side. Just make sure you put it on a flat surface and carefully, with two hands, kind of wiggle this out. I'm using one hand, of course, because I'm holding the camera, but I'm being very careful here. And uh, you'll have a washer on this side of the circuit board. You'll see it right here. Helps to make contact. And also a washer at the bottom. And you'll see that it fell out. And that's why we want it on a flat surface. There it is. Okay. So the bigger washer will be on the bottom. This will be on top. And of course, this goes on the bottom as well on the other side. All right. And, uh, so, at this point, just taking a look at the, uh, the cluster here, this fuel gauge has two grounding posts, or one grounding post, sorry, and two connections here, 
This can be corroded as well, the silver post. So you can see that I had made marks on those because I had to clean it. Uh, it was pretty black and corroded. Uh, same thing with the grounding post right here in the very center. Make sure that that is also clean. And uh, it's gonna be the same thing for your fuel gauge on this side. So I'll just take a look at that and make sure that that's working um, and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, if that doesn't work, uh, there's a few things that could be wrong um, electronically and you'll have to trace that inside of your vehicle or it might be something wrong with your actual gauge. All right, um, so for putting it back together, it's basically the same as taking it apart. Just make sure you're careful. Make sure you put everything back with uh, patience. And uh, the last thing I want to show you guys um, before I put this back together is uh, this circuit board right here on the very bottom. And when putting this back together, when the cluster goes in, um, make sure that these holes line up with these pins. You can see them right there. And that you don't bend any of those. The actual board on the bottom here can be taken out by unscrewing this plastic piece right here. And the reason why you want to take this board out for any reason at all uh, would be to exchange the batteries on this board. They do have batteries. Uh, I believe they're three volt batteries. Um, they're right here. I'm going to point with the screwdriver. In the very bottom back right there. So uh, at this point I don't really need to replace mine, but um, they're glued on there. Uh, so if you do replace them, make sure that you kind of follow. Uh, and uh, I believe it was hot glued on there. So just be careful not to get it on the circuit board when you do. So this pulls out. And uh, this whole cluster actually runs on one computer chip, which goes here, which actually comes off and clips on the, the side plastic pieces. Uh, just make sure, if you ever replace these, to remember these numbers in the front. Alright, hope you enjoyed um, this cluster um, introduction. And um, if you have any more questions, just email me below or just get in contact me and send me a message. Thank you and hope you enjoyed it.